Hello everyone and welcome to my video presentation for the RCAP 2021 finals. My name is Yosu Bin and I'm from Bukit Panjang Government High School. I am participating in the Autonomous Driving Challenge Under 19 League. My team name is Low Bouncing Balls and my team ID is SG1442. Here is my game plan for the preliminary round. As you can see, there are two things to look out for when planning the route of the robot. The first would be the length of the route. The shorter the path taken, the faster the run. This is because distance and time are directly proportional, meaning as distance increases, time also increases. If the path is not straightforward and has multiple turns, the bot will be slow, as the straightest path between two points is a straight line. The other thing to look out for is consistency. If the path taken is inconsistent, it will take multiple tries to get the desired run, which is time consuming. If it is consistent, I can easily test and add new features in the algorithm that are meant for later parts of the route. I'll briefly talk about the task for the preliminary round. First, I have to start from station B as marked by the red circle. Then I have to pass through all 5 waypoints as marked by the yellow circles and end at station H as marked by the blue circle. The goal here would be to complete as fast as possible and reach the end with the shortest time possible. When planning my route, I faced a few problems. As mentioned before, there are two key components in what qualifies as the best route. However, the problem with the length-based strategy or the shortest path is that the shortest possible path would be too inconsistent and there was a section which had no line whatsoever. This meant that there was nothing to follow or track, thus it was inconsistent. But the problem with the consistency-based strategy or the reliable path is that the reliable path was more consistent, however, it had multiple junctions and colour markers. The windy turns would also result in more distance travel, thus it would take a longer time to complete the route. Next, I will be briefly running through the two routes that I plan to take. The first route is the length-based strategy, as marked by the red line. As you can see, the route is rather straightforward. However, the circled section of the track has no lines. Plus, it has a turn which needs to be perfectly timed. This makes it really inconsistent and not a great choice for automated bot. The second route is the consistency-based strategy, as marked by the light blue line. As you can see, although it's more windy than the first one, it is very consistent as there are lines throughout. There is a branching path indicated by the orange part. However, since there is no line, it is really risky and similar to the circle part in the first route. I ended up using the consistency-based strategy and following the light blue path as shown. However, before that, I tried the shortest path for about 2 hours and it only got me to VO2. By that point, I was about to give up, when I realised I could switch to the consistent route. Afterwards, I got VO5 nearly every time. To be specific, I got a timing of 1 minute, 10 seconds and 031 milliseconds. And eventually, I reached the end with a timing of 59 seconds and 891 milliseconds, which was my first end in the whole competition. Next, I will be talking about the second part of my strategy which was the line tracking algorithm. The type of line tracking that I used was normal line tracking despite using proportional line tracking in the qualifying rounds. There are two reasons for that. The first being, when using Python, the light sensors would not read the values properly, hence I had to use the AI GUI to code, which was really unfamiliar to me as this was my first time using the code space AI GUI. The second reason was that the normal line tracking was surprisingly smoother than the proportional line tracking. I mentioned in my previous video that the proportional line tracking I used relied on angles. However, in this map, since my strategy involved really winding turns, the angles were often inaccurate due to miscalculations. 
There were a few things to note. When doing the line tracking algorithm, especially on winding routes like the one I chose, there exists a balance between speed and control. With low speed, there will be good control of the bot, meaning it will not tend to go off the course. However, with high speed, you tend to trade control for speed, and with low control, the bot will go off course easily. There is another problem present in the route. I call this the duplicate and conflicting markers problem. As you can see, there are two blue markers of the same shade. However, the first marker is telling the bot to turn right, whereas the second marker is telling it to turn left. Fortunately, there is an easy solution. The solution would be to create a counter system. When sensing the blue marker for the first time, it checks a custom variable I named times blue if it is more than zero. If not, it turns right and then it adds one to the variable times blue. Then when it senses blue again, it checks if the variable times blue is more than zero. If it is, it turns left. After encountering and solving all the problems, I ended up with a final timing of 58 seconds and 395 milliseconds. Although this was my timing, I couldn't replicate it when recording using OBS, as my frame rate constantly dropped and rose inconsistently, causing the time to be inaccurate. I will now be playing a recreated version of the run. As mentioned in the previous slide, it will be inaccurate as during the actual run, my FPS was consistent. Okay, freeze. Do you see the lime green marker that my bot is about to approach? That was the marker that caused me a lot of trouble. In the earlier part of the route, the lime green marker allows my bot to turn left perfectly. However, the second lime green marker was really unpredictable, and it would constantly overturn, underturn, or miss. Now that the video has ended, let me move back to the slides. I felt that there were a few areas of improvement that I could have made. I could have opted to use the orange section in the consistent path as shown, as it was shorter, thus it improves timing. Another area I could have improved was time management. I could have planned better to avoid wasting 2 hours on the inconsistent route and instead spent the time on improving the line tracking speed. These were the learning experiences I had gained during the preliminary rounds. I learned how to use the AI GUI as well as learned some basic syntax using C as I used C in the advanced actions. I also learned how to more efficiently plan routes. Finally, I learned that when the task at hand seems impossible, I should tackle it from another angle for most obstacles in life are never so straightforward. In the end, it was a different experience to what I'm used to, this being my first virtual robotics competition. I learned the basics of Python application in robotics instead of using the EV3 visual scripting. Despite eventually using the AI GUI, I would have used Python if not for the minor inconveniences. I was satisfied with my final timing, however, I hope to do better during the finals. Thank you for listening to my video presentation.